Welcome everyone to The Doe Show, episode three. I'm Joyce Day, your host here with Jennifer Brady, a presidential diamond out of central Illinois. Hello, Jennifer. Hi, Joyce. How are you today? I'm doing really well. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I see you're working in your office there. How's that going mm -hmm. for you today? I'm working in my car today <laughs> because that's the beauty of being able to do doTERRA, that you can work wherever you are. Yes, it is. I love that. I'm actually, I set up a little studio here for shooting in my basement. So you know what? We can bounce around and do stuff all over the place and it's, it's all good. So yes. Uh, so Jennifer, I am so excited to have you here with us today. And I'm just really excited to share uh, with the, with our audience, a little bit of your story. And um, cause you've got your, I'm right here in central Illinois with Jennifer. I'm in Peoria, she's in Springfield. And so of course I've heard her speak a bunch of times at corporate events and um, so I'm really familiar with her story. So I, I find it inspiring and I'm sure you will as well. So Jen, if you don't mind, why don't you take us through what is your story with doTERRA? How'd you get involved? Did you jump into the business right away? Um, what, what are the details? Sure. So I was introduced to doTERRA in 2012, and I didn't have any desire to do this as a business. Um, I'm a homeschool mom. I used to be a teacher, and my husband and I were running a non-for-profit ministry. For, uh, we did that for eight years, and I was just facing a possible hysterectomy after having four children. And a girlfriend of mine introduced me to doTERRA through basil oil um, in early 2012. And I just started using it just as a user, no desire to be a sharer or a builder or anything else. Um, and for about a year, I was just that. I was a user. So doTERRA ended up saving me from a hysterectomy. Um, it ended up getting our kiddos off their medicine. We slept better. We felt better. We were healthier. Um, we had more energy. Just all around, we were better. Our quality of life was so much better after being introduced to doTERRA. So for about a year, I just sat there using my oils. I wasn't on LRP. Um, I wasn't anything. I was getting some oils. I was buying oils, but I was buying from my upline who never shared with me that I had my own account or never shared with me about LRP. So I bought what was called back then the family physician kit and we just used it. And then I would replenish my oils through her. And probably in about mid 2013, summer, I decided that I wanted to start sharing with others because so many people were asking. They noticed the difference in me and my kids. Um, they saw me using my oils and they just had a lot of questions. So I started just, I had a class and then I had another class and it was just kind of one of those things that happened on its own. I never truly wanted to do it. And in fact, I remember saying, I never want to sell anything. I never want to do a business. Mm -hmm. uh, I, people that do MLMs are annoying and that's <laughs> going to be me. And so even when my friends would sell things and they'd invite me to do it with them, I'd always say, no, I'm not going to be one of those girls. So it just happened to be that it kind of went on its own. Um, Andy Goddard and Natalie Goddard, who are my way, way upline, they did this challenge. Um, they wrote a program called Share Success, which is now our Empowered Success. But they wrote a program called Share Success, and they wanted to do a trial run of it on their own team. And so they said, we're going to do this, and if you win, there's prizes. So I, one of my top five strengths is competition. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, I'm going to just do this, not knowing what I'm doing. And so I ended up winning first place in the company in the trial run of Share Success. And so my prize was a, a trip to convention. And so not knowing I was a brand new elite, not knowing what I was doing, not knowing if I even really wanted to do this. Um, I packed all of our family, my kiddos, my husband, because we homeschool in our minivan and we drove out to Salt Lake City so I could just check this company out. So we're talking like September of 2013. And that convention changed my life. So I decided after hearing from the owners, after seeing the heart of the company, that I wanted to be a part of this. It was different and it was special and it was, um, it was something life-changing. And this wasn't selling purses or selling makeup or selling something that I didn't want to be a part of. This was actually helping people and changing lives um, and giving people health freedom and financial freedom and time freedom and all the things that we desire. And so that was kind of where my journey began. I just started sharing and I became a silver um, that September, I mean that December and I was um, 
a diamond the following December and a blue diamond the December after that. And then now I'm a, just a newer presidential diamond. And so that's my story. The majority of my team is in central Illinois. I do have team all over the country, but um, the, the huge part of it is around Springfield, Illinois. Um, that's where even all my qualifiers pretty much are around here. And um, that's that's what we do. So we're living a life of just traveling and sharing doTERRA, um, homeschooling our kiddos, and really creating that life that we want of time and freedom and most importantly, helping others. So that's my story. Awesome. It's such a great story. And there's some things I, I hear in there and a few other details that I've heard um, through you speaking at other times that I want to just kind of tease out some details for people. So um, one of the things that I've always really uh, enjoyed about you is that, and I hope you don't mind talking about this, is that you do bring your faith into your business and you kind of live by your faith through, through doTERRA. Would you mind sharing about that a little bit? Sure. So um, something that really, really impresses me about doTERRA is that um, when we were discovering doTERRA and looking, looking into essential oils. Um, cause I had had other friends share other oils with me, Young Living, um, okay. Heritage, which is now Hopewell, some other oils, um, people have given me. When I go back and I read their websites and I read what their owners say, and I read their sourcing, uh, they're very, many of those companies are very, very, um, new agey. And it's all about mother nature and um, the universe. And that just didn't align with our beliefs. And everything that we read from doTERRA really, really aligned with our beliefs. So um, we are Christians. And I would say our very top priority in life is serving God. Um, so my priorities are definitely serving God, serving my family, and serving others. And doTERRA was one company that really um, could align with our beliefs. And doTERRA really feels like a ministry. So we're able to help people heal physically and emotionally and spiritually. And we've seen lives change on lots and lots of levels because of this amazing company. I think that's really cool. And I know, um, and, and, and of course, you know, I always want to caveat this to say it's, it, it, you know, it, it's, it's not that everyone in doTERRA is a, is a Christian leader or anything like that. You don't have to. Everyone has their different faiths. I love that about doTERRA. You don't see any of that. I've been to other oil classes where there was kind of a um, sort of religious overtones on the classes and things like that. So I never want people to listen to this and think that that's what we're about. It's not. But I do think it's important as builders because that's the audience for the Do Show. We're here as, as a um, business builder community to support each other. And I just think it's really cool to think about. Um, I know my business, the first couple of years, I, I've always been a very type A driven person. And I was like all about my head for the first year or two, really pushing, pushing, pushing. And that is an important part of business, right? But the, the it's an emotional roller coaster. And there's a lot yeah. of highs and lows that come with building a business. And it was really, it's been in the last um, probably year to two years where I've really sort of um, kind of been marrying my faith and my um, business together and really looking at it kind of, as you said, as a way to serve and then just letting, you know, trusting that, you know, God's leading me in the right direction and that wherever my business is supposed to go, my job is to just keep showing up and doing the best I can and serving others and trusting that it's all going to happen in its own timing and everything. And so I just think it's got, there's a lot of value in that um, with doTERRA to, to just bring your faith in it. Don't be, don't be ashamed to do that or don't be, you know, it's okay to do that. And I also thought it found it very inspiring that you actually, um, your leaders are, are on the same page with you and that you guys actually pray together and do um, different things as part of your pushes. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to elaborate a little bit on that? Sure. So, you know, as always in doTERRA, whenever you're building a team, you usually, your main leaders are usually, that you attract, are usually a lot like yourself. Mm -hmm. And I have found that true to be um, true with all my qualifiers. So all of my qualifiers are mamas, um, all but one who will be someday. She's very young. Uh, one, of my, one of my qualifiers who is platinum almost diamond is only 22. 
Wow. And so, yeah, um, she's amazing. But um, we, we as a group will, when we're making a push or we, we sent some spiritual warfare or we spent, or we sense just like people on our team being stuck or issues going on, we will come together as a group and we will um, individually and, and corporately um, pray over our team. Um, we will fast as a group. We'll say, you know, Monday, every Monday at breakfast this month, we're going to fast. And we'll just, you know, we'll just use that time instead of eating to pray. And we'll just ask God for things like, you know, bring us new shares, bring us new builders, bring us this much in volume. And we ask God for some really, really specific requests. And we have just found out when you are using that spiritual discipline of prayer and fasting, um, God really honors that. And we see our prayers answered and um, in ways that could only, only be him just crazy things like, I mean, I could go on and on, but just one example is, um, I was needing a, a leg. I was needing a silver leg and I was needing, um, volume on this one leg. And so we were, we were just praying, um, my qualifier since then has switched on that leg, but at that point I was needing volume on one leg for that qualifier and I was just praying and praying. And um, in the meantime, somebody, a lady we knew from church, she ended up, she died and I donated a basket. Like I just donated a basket to a silent auction that was for her memorial. And through that, I mean, it was just crazy. Like God just orders our stuff so much. Um, the person, I went to her silent auction and there was a list of names of people that bid on my basket. And, you know, obviously only the top person won, but I took a picture. I just snapped a picture with my phone of those names and I texted all of them. And I said, I saw that you bid on this basket and I'm sorry you didn't win, but would you be interested in a sample? I'd be happy to send you something. Um, one of those people that bid on my basket ended up owning an ice cream shop locally who then wanted a sample who ended up wanting me to do a class there who ended up signing up the pharmacist from the pharmacist next door to the ice cream shop who ended up signing up her friend in Wisconsin, who I now hold the enrollment of that silver <laughs> for wow. that leg. And so it's so crazy how God like just completely answers your prayers and, um, and opens doors for you that would not have otherwise been open. So. That is so cool. I love, yeah. I love hearing those stories. And so for those of you out there watching and listening, um, you know, I think we just have to, to have faith and keep moving forward in our businesses and, um, and let it be okay that things sometimes don't always show up the way we think they're going to. In fact, yeah. you know, they say we make plans and, and God laughs and I, <laughs> I think that's totally true. <laughs> There's a song I heard years ago and I, I don't remember the, it's like, it's by Sandra Lerche and it's just a fun little song, but he says, plan to be surprised. That's the, the, the thing that they sing over and over again. And I always thought that was kind of cute, you know? Yeah, definitely plan yeah. to be surprised because it's more fun when you do that. Right. Cause then you don't yeah. have to know exactly how it's going to happen. So awesome. So, um, so you've got your team, your presidential. And so, um, I think it's also interesting to hear a little bit about the details of your story, um, about you. Now you, didn't use for a year and then you became a builder, right? So you just kind of sat on your front line and there was, there's a little bit of a story behind your leader and, and your, your friend that actually signed you up actually ended up dropping out. Is that right? Yep. So a girlfriend of mine that introduced me to doTERRA, she gave me the basil when I was um, going to have to have hysterectomy. She just decided that she wasn't going to do doTERRA anymore. So I um, was given to someone else. She dropped off and I was, somebody else was given my enrollment um, that really didn't have anything to do with bringing me to doTERRA, but they just get to hold my enrollment. Mm -hmm. um, so there are actually three people between um, me and the person who holds my enrollment who don't do it as a business. Okay. And so they literally just ordered their hundred dollars every month, but they, they're not builders. They're not sharers. They're not supporters. They're just there. Um, and that's sometimes how, how doTERRA rolls. You just kind of, those are called blessing spots. Yes. And they're just getting a nice check every month and they're getting blessed by it. And for some reason, God, or, you know, orchestrated that and that's okay. And so I actually don't have any upline in my state. Um, I outrank a lot of my upline um, for a long way up. I think I outrank all of my upline right now, all the way through um, Cherie Burton, who's yeah. also a presidential. So um, 
that's just kind of, that's just kind of how it is. I, you know, we don't, we need our upline to love us and support us and pray for us. We don't need our upline to build us or do anything like that for us. We're totally capable of doing that ourselves. Even as a presidential diamond, I've never been given an orphan. Mm -hmm. I've never had one person placed on my team ever. Mm -hmm. My upline's never given me anyone. Um, They don't even live in the state. And so I don't want anybody to think that because your upline is that give you people because you're not a qualifier for someone because you know because you don't feel like you have local support it's okay you can do this with or without that because this is this is about you and your team and God and you can run with it so I just want to give you guys that encouragement that um don't let that be an excuse for you Mm -hmm. not building awesome I love that and so um so it, it's also that lesson that I, I've taken to heart just because I've heard it. And this is tickles at me, right? This idea of you, a presidential diamond sitting on someone's team and you know, the, the person that signed you up quits. And then you have several levels of people that are just kind of hanging out. They're not doing it as a business. Mm-hmm. And then, and then there's you, you know? And so I, it's just helped me so much in the last year or two, as I'm trying to shift the way I do my business, instead of being a bull in a China shop, you know, taking the, 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 you know, pushing hard, hard, hard of getting smarter and thinking about, you know, the people that are already on my team. One of my little mantras is I already have all the leaders that I need on my team. They're already there. And my job is to just go look for them uh, because I haven't been fantastic in the past. I'm going to be honest here about um, that long-term follow-up. It's very discouraging sometimes when you reach out to people a couple of times and maybe you don't hear back or you don't, you know, you don't necessarily see as you're sending emails or you're doing Facebook that they're responding, but we never yeah. know who's watching and who is taking in that information or when their life circumstances. Eric Worre says that people do the business when it's the right product at the right time and the right business opportunity, mm-hmm. that those three things have to come together for it to be the right time. And I, and I know that was true for me. If I would have run into the oils five years previous, yeah, I, I would have not done the business. I was very happy in my career, but it took mm-hmm. that circumstance of really needing a way out of my professional career so I could be home with my daughter that yeah. forced me out of my comfort zone. And I was, you know, I was going to do whatever it took to, to make this work because it was the right products. I could get, I could work with these. I could make, you know, I love them. They were awesome. And it was the right um, time for me because of my circumstances and the business opportunity of course speaks for itself. So for sure. Yeah. So I just think that's a wonderful thing. I, I love sharing that. And I'm, I love the chance to bring you on here for all those listening and watching to um, just know you've got these people sitting on your team. So don't give up on them, you know, right. don't give up on them. And even if they haven't ordered for a year, just yeah. don't, you know, keep in contact with them, keep educating them, keep loving them anyway. And you never know. So many of us, I think are sitting on a gold mine of builders that we just need to harvest because yes. you've already done the hard part. You've already enrolled them. That yes. part's there. Now we just have to help them transition into building. So definitely your words are so correct. Awesome. And then the last thing I want to talk about is something that I had seen you post about in a a Facebook group, um, Mm -hmm. I don't know, a few weeks back. And it was right after convention, of course, this is being recorded in October. We had convention last month. And there was some comments that were made that you were running into in your team uh, Mm -hmm. about people kind of commenting the circumstances at convention that, um, that, that diamond was now the new silver, that it wasn't even that big of a deal to be diamond and and even if it was to be silver or on any of these lower ranks that you that feel people feeling like they they didn't have a lot of value so this is obviously a really important topic and something that we want to address directly uh, whenever we hear it but there's plenty of people that don't necessarily say these things but they're thinking them so let's Mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit can you tell talk a little bit more about this and and what your thoughts are sure so on my own team, we had a large group of people go to convention, and I also coach on the site. So I coach a lot of um, silvers and above, I all the way up to diamonds um, in my business coaching business. And something that I've heard a lot recently in the last year, and especially after convention, are people making comments like, um, unless you have an M1 account, you're not a real leader, or a diamond is 
considered the new silver. And I heard it and I heard it and heard it. And finally, I decided to make a post and speak out about it because it's just not true. You are a leader. Um, you're a leader no matter what rank you are, depending on your own action and your own character. You might be an executive who's an amazing leader, and you might be a presidential diamond who's a really bad leader. <laughs> so your rank doesn't define you. And I know in doTERRA, we have grown so big, so fast. We're the world's leading essential oil company. We're the most tested, the most trusted, and the world's eyes are on this company right now. And so it's so many people hit silver and you know gold and platinum and diamond. Diamond. And it's so easy to look at them and say, diamond's not what it used to be. Diamond used to be this special rank, and now there are so many. Well, I want you to know that that's not true. When you hit diamond in this company, you are an, you know, you are a top elite level leader. You are very, very, very um, important in this company because this, this, Diamond is such a huge rank. In fact, uh, many, many people who hit diamond don't even hold that rank because it is such a hard rank to hit. A lot of people hit diamond once or twice and then for a while they'll revert back to silver or gold or platinum and which that's okay. That's just part of their journey. But um, I want people to know that if you hit diamond, you are just such a small percentage of over 6 million people who use these oils. And it, I don't want it to be downplayed. It's a huge deal. And then even less people hit blue and presidential and double diamond and all these other ranks. So um, keep doing what you're doing. What you're doing is important. Even as an elite and a premier, keep pushing for these ranks because they are special and they are important. And just because a lot of people are hitting them doesn't make them less important. And the people that are saying that they're wrong and it's rude and it's not true. And so keep doing what you're doing, building. It's important. You're changing lives and strive for that diamond ring because it is very special. And I just hit diamond back in November and I feel like a brand new diamond and I, I feel pretty special. I mean, we don't maintain it every month. Um, we maintain, we hit it about half the time and, uh, and, and, and I'm okay with that. And I'm not afraid to say that. And I think that our teams need to know that. And you know what, it's the same thing that's happened with almost every other rank for me. I mean, um, you know, it's normal to, work hard, 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 make a push for a new rank. And then you hit it and you're super excited and you're celebrating. And then you, it's really normal to bounce around for a few months as you're solidifying. That's right. Totally and it's, true. It's yeah. totally normal. So then you get super solid at that rank and yes. then the same thing happens all over again. Then you start pushing for the next rank, you know, and you work super hard and you make a push and you get there and, and that's totally normal. So um, yeah, I've heard that term duct tape diamond and it made me kind of chuckle when I first heard it because I guess you could say I'm a duct tape to, it feels like <laughs> duct tape diamond sometimes when I'm working super hard and watching the numbers and, and hoping and hoping that it's going to work out. But you know what? There, there's no shame in that. And the, and the other thing I would say is, you know, there are 1,500, isn't there like 1,500 diamonds, blue diamonds and presidentials now, I think, somewhere around there, 14, 1,500, something like that. Um, that's the way it's supposed to be, you guys. Like that, yeah. that doesn't discourage me. That fills me with hope because yes. you, we look at all these other companies out there. I don't know if it's some kind of a record or what, but for us to only be 10 years old and have that many diamonds and above in the company, like that's a huge blessing. That's like right on. That's what we want to see because that means yeah. it's doable. It's achievable. Yes. Yeah. You know, it is. And the diamond you yeah, see so on lucky. when you're on the diamond page yeah. and the diamonds you see, they're, they're not always a cookie cutter. You're seeing single moms, you're seeing guys, you're seeing older couples, you're seeing mm -hmm. Um, women whose husbands don't do it with them. You know, you're seeing everything, people from all different countries, all different races. And so it just shows that diamond is very achievable if you are willing to work hard for it. And, um, and another thing I just want to put out there is there are so many right now, I think a big hang up in doTERRA right now are, is that there's so many systems and there's so many things going on all the time. And there's all these shiny new 
pennies that people want to follow. But I just want to, I just want to put out there that the way that all of these people have hit diamond and the reason it's doable is because they're doing the same few things over and over and over again. They're sampling and they're enrolling and they're getting people on LLV and LRP and they're supporting them and they're repeating it. And so that's the way to get diamond. It's been proven for 10 years in this company over and over and over again that it's doable if you follow those steps. You can't think yourself to diamond. You mm-hmm. can't give yourself enough affirmations talking to yourself in the mirror to make you diamond. You can't rely on your upline to build you to diamond. The way to diamond is enroll people and become duplicatable. Bottom line, it's so simple. That's awesome. I love it. And that's the thing is most of us aren't familiar with business. I mean, we do attract people that have are maybe have never done business before. They never, just like yourself, never planned on doing this, never done network marketing before. Same thing here. I'm a scientist. I have no business training. I have a shotgun approach to the whole thing, but that's because that's who we attract. And so I think it can be hard sometimes for people. They don't understand, you know, this is, this is the business. It's just doing those actions over and over. And sometimes people don't call you back and sometimes people don't show up to classes and sometimes they don't buy the kit and sometimes they just want to buy retail and sometimes they sign up with somebody else. And sometimes you do vendor shows and you get a stack of door price slips of a hundred people and nobody texts you back. And it's all part of the process. It's all part of it. So you just keep doing it over and over and over again. And that's the roller coaster of just dealing with the highs are when they do text you back and they do sign up and they do show up to the class. Like that's the fun stuff, but it comes along with those discouraging times. And so those of us that have hit the higher ranks, I feel like we just keep going. We don't let those negative things derail us. And we all find different ways of managing and dealing with it, but we just have to keep going. And so that's what I've had some people on my team that um, one of them in particular, I've been kind of mentoring her and she, she just really struggled. It's been a slow growth for her. And we were chatting recently. She's got some really cool things going on, on our team and she's going for premier rank by Christmas. And I think, I think she's going to get there. And um, I told her we were meeting up for coffee and kind of strategizing. She's telling me what's going on on our team. And I said, oh my gosh, you, do you realize the experience that you have, the fact that you've kept persevering, even though it's taken a while and it just didn't come naturally to you, but you're going to have such amazing experience to be able to help other people. We all, we need all these different stories. Um, yeah. And we are all still here. We're all still working at it. So um, never doubt your own story. The, the only way your story won't matter is if you quit. Right. Right. But whatever your story is, if you just keep going, it's going to, the happy ending of you hit your diamond or you hit your whatever rank that you wanted for yourself, mm-hmm. you're going to be able to share that story and say, this is what I went through. And man, did it suck when I was going through it. Or man, that was hard. Yeah. But I got there because I kept going. When it really boils down to the end of, you know, boils down, it really comes back to you. We just have to persevere. We have to keep going. So. Right. Perseverance always trumps talent. Always. I agree. I agree. And it's really cool to see people on our teams and ourselves to go to push past those obstacles. Um, And sometimes just live through them pushing makes it sound like you're fighting it. But even just to live through those obstacles, and to keep going is just a beautiful thing. So it's pretty cool. All right. We all have obstacles. I don't want anybody to think when you get to these ranks, the obstacles are gone too. I just wanted to throw that out there, even as diamonds and blue diamonds and presidentials just this week. So I have been talking to someone about building and I've got my eyes open for um, four new silvers to put on my front line for my M1 account for double diamond. And I've kind of been scoping people out because I'm really, really picky about who I'm going to put on my front line. And I've been chatting with a lady who um, I think would be very good. And she's a long time um, family friend. And so she decided this week, unknowingly, because she doesn't really understand the business yet, to sign up with a, a consultant on my team. A consultant who has never ranked, who's never enrolled anybody, and who's never um, done the business. And so I you know, I had to mourn, you know, in my own little way, the loss of probably a rock star builder. That could have been one of my double diamond qualifiers, but the right thing to do is not to go try to get her back or not to try to, it's just, you know, God, for some reason wanted her there. And that's where it is. So I just want you to know that even as you're, as you're growing, even as at these diamond and above ranks, you still face these obstacles and you still have to persevere. And it's not all 
fun and excitement like it may look to you <laughs> from the outside. So yeah, I like to joke that I just, it, and I, sometimes I forget that I'm diamond. I, I'm a new diamond and it's one of those things. I'm just one of those people that like, you know, I, I've always looked to the diamonds as like, you know, it's like the Holy grail, right? You're getting up there and you're going to hit diamond. And I still have some of that mindset that, um, when I, you know, when I hit diamond originally and went to leadership, I had a really hard time going into the, um, diamond reception because I didn't know anybody. And, um, well, I did end up running into two people that were on my uplines other area, but I just felt like I didn't belong there. You know, I still felt really new and, um, just, you know, I've been striving for diamond for so long that to suddenly be like, Oh, I'm here. This is weird. You know? Um, <laughs> so just getting your, my head wrapped around it, it's kind of funny. So I still think of the diamonds. I like to joke of it. I still forget sometimes. And so I think it's easy to think of the diamonds. I sort of jokingly in my own mind think, oh, the diamonds are like hanging out eating bonbons, right? I've been joking about that with some of the other diamonds I've been interviewing. Like your life's cake now, right? You just hang out all day and relax and people like bring you food and fan you with things, right? Isn't that what the life of a presidential especially has got to be like? I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> no, not so much, right? No. Especially when you have kids, right? Nobody's fanning right. you. You're Nobody's still mom. Right. Get back to work. Get back to work. So anyway, well, Jen, I just want to thank you so much for coming on here today and sharing a little bit of your heart and your business. Um, I just love hearing, I, hearing stories from other people who are on the same path as me just fills my heart, fills my cup mm -hmm. and inspires me to keep going. And that's what the Doe Show is all about is sharing those stories uh, in living color on video. And you can now listen to the Doe Show on iTunes. You can search for the Doe Show podcast and listen in your car if that's easier for you. And of course, we'll be living right here on YouTube as well for the video aspect of it. So Jen, thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. You're so welcome. It was good to talk to you today, Joyce. You too. All right. I'll see you soon. Have a okay, good one. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.